Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Wordsmith with us. My name is Karen Spafford Fitz, and I'm delighted to be offering this session to junior high and senior high students. This session is going to be called Fiction Writers Triple Threat. We're going to be focusing for the next two sessions on character, conflict, and craft. And I'm delighted to share some thoughts with you, some ideas about how to make your fiction writers writing stronger. And first of all, I want to thank the program sponsors. I'd like to thank the Young Alberta Book Society for organizing and supporting this particular series. And I'd also like to thank the Rosa Foundation out of Calgary for funding it. So the triple threat. That term comes from the performing arts. And if you were somebody who enjoys being on stage, you've maybe heard of that particular term before. The triple threat talks about, uh, or it refers to singing, acting, and dancing. And those are the three different skills that you really need to perfect if you're going to pursue a life on the stage. And maybe some of you already know that and are going after that performing arts life and good for you. I decided to coin that term, the triple threat, to talk about three things that are also really important when you're writing fiction, character, conflict, and craft. Now, I need to tell you that today we're going to do a slightly longer session and we're going to talk about character and conflict. So the first two uh, items in that triple threat that I mentioned to you. And what's going to happen is this particular episode is going to go live immediately, but if by August the 13th, you were able to get back to me with some writing that you've done in response to what I've told you today, or if you get back to me with some questions about the session, that will be wonderful. You then will get to participate in the second session, which will go live August the 20th. So for that to happen, you need to email your uh, writing excerpt or your questions to me by August the 13th. And at the end of this video, I'm going to put the, um, I'm going to give you the, the email address that you're to send that to. And I hope that, uh, I hope that I get some great responses from students out there. And for today, we're going to start talking about character first. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you some excerpts from one of my teen books. It's called Pushback. And for me, anytime I start writing a piece of fiction, what I have to do is really get the character's um, personality fixed in my mind. And what I'd like to do is read a couple of excerpts. And these are about my main character, Zane, or my protagonist, Zane. He's 16 years old. And I'd like you to just have a listen and think about what you are learning about Zane's character. So I'll start a little bit into the book. And I will tell you that at this point, Zane is recovering from some injuries. He's spending some time at his aunt's house. And Auntie has two young children. They're three years old. Carter is driving his little ride-on tractor around the couch where I'm sprawled out. Lawson has scribbled another, scribbled another picture to show me. It's a cow! Lawson shoves a paper at me. It looks just like the butterfly he showed me two minutes ago. Coolest cow ever, I say. Right on, buddy. His face lights up. Are you two letting Zane rest? Aunt Sarah calls from the kitchen. Yes, yes we are. To me, that seems like a lie, but maybe in their wacky little three-year-old world, that doesn't even qualify as bending the truth. This is pretty much how I spend my days now that I'm home from the hospital. My ribs are healing well, and I've been up moving around more. That's probably why the twins keep forgetting that I can't always play with them or answer their millions of questions. And I'll just jump forward a little bit here but I am starting to feel better. And I've been helping Aunt Sarah, like with making dinner and cleaning up. And as always, there's no ducking the twins and their millions of why questions every day. Why my shadow sneeze too? Why snow melt? Why chocolate milk so yummy? I try to answer Carter and Lawson as best I can. So from that excerpt, Zane showed us by what he says, by what he does, by what he's thinking, uh, something important about his character. 
And you probably picked up on this too, that he's very patient with his younger cousins. Um, they're 13 years younger than him. Their questions are incessant. And still he tries to answer their questions. He's patient, he's kind, he's thoughtful toward them. So that's a really positive part of Zane's character. Now, when we write our stories, we have to make sure that our characters are realistic. And so if I just made Zane 100% positive, the story would not be terribly interesting or terribly uh, realistic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to read you another excerpt from Pushback where you see another side to Zane's character. And I'll just tell you that in this particular reading, Zane has, he's needed to cool off a little bit. And so he goes to a garden shed that has been transformed into um, an art studio. And it's a place where he's gone in the past to just, um, to just kind of cool off, come down from whatever's troubling him. And Zane has had quite a few things troubling him in the last little while. So he stepped back into this studio that he's come to think of as his own place, his own private sanctuary. And he looks around and the place is a disaster. Somebody new has moved in and there are bags of garbage and junk everywhere. So I'll start reading at this point where Zane says, why does everything have to be so damn complicated? That's the last thing I remember before a heavy curtain of rage slips over my eyes. Pressure is building inside me, choking me until I can hardly breathe. Suddenly I'm kicking the punching bag on the floor, once, twice, then again and again. I shove the boxes over and slam the bike against the wall. The front tire clatters to the floor. I upend the boxes and crates, books and sports equipment and screwdrivers are all a jumble by my feet. So Zane has, he basically trashes the shed and at one point he looks up and realizes that someone's approaching the shed. He sees a flashlight beam uh, bouncing up and down as somebody is, is uh, coming toward the shed. They've heard all the noise that he's made. Who's in there? The voice is gruff. The flashlight beam lands squarely on my face as the man bursts in the door. Just as I'm twisting my body sideways to slide past him, he grabs onto me and the light veers crazily around the rim. Parts of his face light up in the jagged beam. I see flashes of gray hair, a scar beneath his cheekbone, a, slight, a tightly clenched jaw. Shit, the guy's built like a cement truck. Anytime he can catch a break, he's cursing me out you little shithead, you damn punk. I'm struggling to get away from him, but he's shoving me backwards, slamming my body against the wall. I push back as hard as I can until we're in the doorway again. Both of us are panting hard. We're nose to nose now, and his breath hits me square in the face. Then I realize I'm still clutching the wrench. I jab it into the guy's side. He grunts and releases his hold. I push past him and sprint toward the ravine. At least it shouldn't be too hard to, un to outrun this old guy. Why you little? His voice is right behind me. As I weave through the pine trees, I can still hear his heavy breathing. It's even darker down here now, so I barely see the rail fence. Just in time, I throw my front leg over, then I snap my other leg around. I realize I'm still holding the wrench. It's slowing me down. I need to get rid of it. I turn my body and fling it frisbee style away from me. A stream of swears and a heavy crash ring out from behind me. The wrench must have hit the old geezer. And unlike me, he didn't clear the fence. I keep running hard, my ankles catching in ruts and slipping on the heavy mud. When the plaza appears up ahead, I burst out of the ravine. I wait until I'm past the school before slowing to a walk. I'm shivering in my sweaty t-shirt as I creep back into the house. I drop down onto my bed. My whole body feels heavy. As for that old guy, I wonder if he made it back to his house okay. Then again, to hell with him. He'll have to take care of himself, just like I've always had to do. So in that reading, as you can see, we, we get a glimpse of quite a different um, part of Zane's personality. Um, possibly what you're thinking is that he has a temper problem, which he does. Uh, he has some anger management issues. He's embittered. And um, so that's quite different from the first readings that I did where we saw Zane at his patient kind best. So I decided when I was writing this story that I needed to include both positive traits 
and negative traits. And that's what makes our characters in our fictional stories realistic. So in terms of some positive traits that you might want to think of for your characters when you're doing your fiction writing, you might want to think about character traits like honest, kind, loyal, responsible, polite, fair, respectful, and any number of other traits that we generally think of as being positive or admirable traits. But here's the thing, to make that character realistic, you also need to think about some negative traits. And in Zane's case, that was angry, bitter. Um, some other possibilities for negative traits are selfish, grumpy, rude, self-centered, disloyal, picky, clingy, blunt, um, annoying, indecisive. So those are some negative traits. And what I'd like you to do, uh, and this is your first task, I would like you to pick the different character traits that you'd like to include in your story. So I want you to pick three positive character traits and two negative traits. And at this point, you might want to turn the video off for a few moments while you think about that and while you choose your three positive traits and the two negative traits that you're going to show. So at this point, you probably have your three positive traits that your character is going to show us and also the two negative traits. And what I'd like you to do now is to spend a little bit more time thinking about your character. And authors do this a lot. We, we spend a lot of time getting to know our main character so that their behavior doesn't seem just random. Um, we really want to stay in character with that particular protagonist, especially. So here's some questions I want you to think about with regards to your main character or your protagonist. What is that character's name? What is that character's age? What does that character like more than anything in the world? What scares that character? What makes that character laugh? And what is that character's deepest secret? So those are the kind of things that, you know, maybe you like to, to find out when you're getting to know a person in real life. And it helps to get to know those things about your fictional character as well. So at this point, you probably have a good idea about your character. And I now want to take and drop that character into a situation with a lot of conflict. And just to get you writing right away, I decided I would give you some story prompts. So take that character and think about dropping that character into one of these situations. First of all, a situation where your character has been falsely accused of committing a serious crime and they have to prove their innocence. Another idea, another possibility, you were on a dangerous quest to find or to return a mystical object. So that's what your character has to do. The next one, next idea, the cutest person at school finally phoned you to ask you for your best friend's phone number. Another idea, you've traveled to an odd little town to visit a family member you hardly know. Nobody else seems to notice the children are disappearing. The final idea I'd like to give is, is one from your writing. So if you're somebody who does a bit of writing on your own time or maybe has a story that you started at school and one that you'd like to continue working on, a character you've really enjoyed, what I'd like you to do is move that story along thinking about your character's personality, their positive traits and their negative traits, and then see how much trouble you can get that character in in the course of their journey while they're trying to work through whatever challenge is troubling them at this point. So I hope at this point I have you all fired up to go and do some fiction writing. And uh, remember too, that if you get back to me uh, with some a story excerpt, a part of your story you're really proud of, or that you wanna share, or if you get back to me with questions by August the 13th, I will include them in my second session. And that second session will go live on August the 20th. So I hope you'll join me then. And I look forward to seeing some sharing from uh, some of you people. And I'm going to put onto the screen the email address that you send your work to, uh, to so that it reaches me hopefully by August the 13th and I can include it in the next session. And also one more big thanks to the Young Alberta Book Society and to the Rosa Foundation.